He produced us from Al Adam. He produced us from non existence. So before we were created, we were nothing. Just as He, the Most High, said, Surah al Insan, the 76th Surah, the first ayah. With the explanation, has there not come upon man a time period when he was nothing worthy of mention? And Shaykh al Fawzan quotes the second evidence. He said, And he, the one free of all imperfections, he said, قَالَ كَذَلِكَ قَالَ رَبُّكَ هُوَ عَلَيَّ هَيِّنْ وَقَدْ خَلَقْتُكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ تَكُ شَيْئًا Surah Maryam, the 19th Surah, Ayah 9. With the explanation, he said, that is the case. However, your Lord has said, it is easy for me and I had already created him before when you were nothing. Shaykh Fawzan said, Man before he was created was nothing. And the one who brought him into existence and created him is Allah, the mighty and majestic. He the Most High said, Surah Tur, 32nd Surah, I-35 With the explanation, were they brought into existence without any creator? Or are they themselves their own creators? This explanation is Tafsir being taken from the Bible. There's some difference in the Bible Tafsir, by the meaning of the first phrase, I'm khuliku min ghayr shayi. And some of the explainers mentioned meaning do they, do, they, do they claim that they are created without any fathers and forefathers? Or do they? mentions a view. But the explanation is were they brought into existence without any creator? Or are they themselves their own creators? Shah Razan then said, His saying, Warazahana, and he gave us provision, he gave us a risk. Hazan said, since we need risk, we need provision, we need food and drink and clothing and habitations, places to live, and transport and requirements, then he, the perfect, he knew our needs. So therefore, he made subservient for us whatever is in the heavens and the earth. All of it for our, for our welfare. In order for us to be able to remain alive. And in order for us to use that to help us upon what we were created for. In order, that we, in order to help us upon that for which we were created, the purpose for which we were created, which is Ibadatullah, which is the worship of Allah, the perfect and most high. Shaykh Fawzan mentions two, two reasons there for everything being made subservient for us. Those two physical purposes are first, so that we will be able to remain alive. Secondly, so that we can use those things that they made so in for us for our purpose, for the purpose which we are created for, which is to worship Allah, the Perfect and Most High. Then he said, His saying, Walam yatrukna hamalan, and he did not leave us hamalan with our purpose. Shaykh Fawzan explains this word, he said, Al Hamal. With a ha and hamal, it means something which is neglected, muhmal, and abandoned, matruk. It means something which is neglected, 
and abandoned, which no one cares about. So Allah created us and gave us provision for a wise purpose, for a hikmah. Allah created us and gave us provision for a wise purpose. He did not, cre he did not create us abathan, in vain, nor sudan, nor without purpose. He the Most High said, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Surah Al-Mu'minun, the 23rd Surah, by 115, the explanation. Do you think that you were created uselessly and that you will not be returned to us? And Shaykh Khawazan said, according further evidence, and he, the Perfect, said, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنْسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى أَلَمْ يَكُنْ نُطْفَةً مِنْ مَنِينٍ يُمْنَى ثُمَّ كَانَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقَ فَسَوَى Surah Al-Qiyamah, 75th Surah, Ayahs 36 and 37, or rather Ayahs 36 to 38, three Ayahs. With the explanation, does man think that he will be left without any duties? Was he not previously a drop of a drop of semen emitted? Then he became a clot. Then Allah created and fashioned him as a human in due proportion. And as a side point on the first ayah, insanu an Does man think with explanation and does, does man think? That he will be left Suda, and this word Suda, at Tabari, reports from Mujahid, the famous Tabi, famous Fasir and student of Ibn Abbas, that Mujahid said about this word Suda here in the ayah, La yu'mar wa la yumha. Do you think he'll be left with not, not being commanded with anything, and not being forbidden from anything? Then Shaykh Rawzan, back to the explanation, Shaykh Rawzan quotes another ayah as proof. He said, and he said, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلَةً ذَلِكَ ذَنُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنَ النَّارِ Surah al the 38th Surah, Ayah 27, with the explanation, And we did not create the heavens and the earth, and whatever is between them, without purpose. That is the assumption of those who disbelieve. So woe to those who disbelieve from the fire. Shaykh Fawzan then said, Allah only created us and created these provisions for us and these faculties the hikmatin azimatin wa ghayatin jalila. Allah only created us and created these provisions for us and these faculties for a tremendous wisdom and a tremendous purpose and it is that we should worship him he the perfect and most high and he did not create us like cattle which were created for the welfare of the servants then they will die and pass away because they are not mukallafa because they are not duty bound they don't have any duties put on them, cattle. They were not commanded and they were not forbidden. So mankind is not like that. We are not created the same as cattle. <coughs> Sheikh said, rather he created us, the ibadati, he created us for his worship. Just as he the Most High said, and he quotes the ayahs with the famous evidence, for the purpose of the creation of mankind. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ Surah of Dhariyat, the 51st Surah, Ayahs 56-58 With the explanation, 
and we did not, uh, rather, and I did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me alone. I do not desire from them any provision, and I do not want that they should feed me. Indeed, Allah, He is the great provider, the possessor of tremendous power, the strong. Sheikh Fawzan said, and He did not create us just for the life of this world, that we should live in it and roam around freely and make merry and eat and drink and make ourselves at home in it and that there is nothing after it. Rather, life is a mazra'ah, life is a planting ground and a marketplace for the next life so that we should equip ourselves in it with righteous deeds of Akmal al This life, Sheikh mentioned two things that this life is like. This life is a planting ground, somewhere where you plant what's going to grow for you. And like a marketplace where you buy and sell something good or something not, something evil, something bad. So Sheikh said this life is like a planting ground and a marketplace for the next life. So that we should equip ourselves in it with righteous deeds. Then we will die and move on from it. Then we will be resurrected. Then we will be taken account of. And we will be recompensed in accordance with our deeds. This is the purpose behind the creation of the jinn and mankind. And the proof for that is many ayahs which prove the ba'ath, the raising to life after death, and al mashur the resurrection, and al jaza the recompensing, and al hisab the reckoning. And the aql, the intellect, proves this. So Shaykh Mansin proved two proofs for this. It's, it's proven in many texts. And the ayahs, and it's also proven by the, secondly by the intellect. Then he give, he mentions what is this intellectual proof for this? The mankind of this life leads on to the next life, and that we're rewarded or punished in accordance with what we did in this life. What's the so? The Sheikh mentioned the many ayahs which prove this. Then he mentioned, and this is also proven by the aql, by the intellect, and he explains that because it would not be fit. The hikmah, it would not befit the wisdom of Allah, the perfect and most high, that he should create this amazing creation, and that he should subject this creation to the descendants of Adam, and then just leave them to die and pass away without any result, without any natija, without any result. This would be abath. This would be futile play. So the results of the of those deeds, shall I say, so the results of these deeds must certainly appear in the next abode. And whatever mankind does in this life, from good or bad, it must certainly appear in the next life. And therefore, there can be from the people. Shaykh further explains the same point. And therefore there can be from the people those who spend their whole lives in the worship of Allah and in obedience to Him. And yet he, this person, is in poverty and is needy. And maybe he is one who is oppressed and hard pressed and who suffers difficulty and he does not attain anything from the reward of his actions in this world <coughs> and vice versa the opposite as well can be the case that from the people there are those who 
Or there, is a per- there can be a person who is an unbeliever, a kafir, an evil atheist, who roams around as he wishes and makes merry in this life. He enjoys a life of luxury and he is given whatever he desires. And he commits that which Allah has made forbidden. And he oppresses the servants, he oppresses the people. And he transgresses against them. And he devours their wealth. And he kills people without any right. And he overcomes and he behaves tyrannically. And then he dies upon that condition. He has not been struck by anything from punishment. So Sheikh mentions these two opposite cases that can can happen. By the first person who worships Allah throughout his life, is obedient to Allah throughout his life, and yet he's in poverty, need, he doesn't receive anything from the reward for his deeds in this life. And the opposite case, the unbeliever, the rejecter of his Lord, who does that which Allah has forbidden and to the end of what the Sheikh mentioned about him. And he doesn't suffer any punishment in this life for it. So then the Sheikh says, does it befit the Adul, does it befit the justice of Allah, the perfect and most high, and his hikmah, and his wisdom, that he should leave this obedient person without any reward, and that he should leave this unbeliever without any recompense. This does not befit his justice, he the perfect and most high. So the Sheikh's mentioning the intellectual proof for this. And he said, and therefore he has made the next life, the next abode, to recompense this doer of good for the good which he did, and this doer of evil for the evil which he did. So in it, the fruits of of deeds will become apparent in the next life. So this world, this dunya, this world, is an abode of action. But as for the hereafter, then it is an abode of jaza, of recompense. Either Jannah, either Paradise, or Nar, or the fire. And he did not leave us Hamalan without purpose, as is thought by the atheists. And the Dohriyun, as is the thought of the Malahida, the atheists, and the Dohriyun, those people who think, as it, as it follows in the eye which follows, Dohriyun, those who think that death is the end of us. And the Sheikh quotes the eye about these people. He said, He the Most High said, وَمَا لَهُمْ بِذَلِكَ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ Surah Al-Jathiyah, the 45th Surah, Ayah 24. The explanation. And they say, there is no life except our life in this world. We die and our children live. And nothing brings an end to us except time. And they do not have certain knowledge, rather they just surmise, they just think. Sheikh Fawzan said, this is the saying of the Malachida, this is the saying of the atheists. Those who do not believe in the return to life and the resurrection. Then Shaykh al Fawzan mentions a refutation of them. He said, And Allah the Mighty and Majestic rebutted them. So he said, Surah Al Qalam, 68th Surah, Ayahs 35 to 36. With the explanation, Shall we make the Muslims like the criminals? Shall we make the Muslims like the criminals? Just the same. What is wrong with you? How do you judge? Again, as a side point here, Al-Tabari mentions in his tafsir 
explain what is meant here by the Muslimun, what is meant by the Muslims, and the Mujrimin, the criminals, Shaykh al-Tabari mentioned, Ya Allah, the Muslims, those who submitted in obedience to me, and humbled themselves to me in worship, and submit to my commands and prohibitions. Like the, are they to be treated? Like the Mujrimin, like the criminals? Again, Al-Tabari mentioned as a side point. Those who committed sins, performed acts of disobedience, and contradicted my commands and prohibitions. Then Shaykh Farzan quotes a second proof, a second ayah. He said, and he the Most High said, أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَقُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ أَنْ نَجْعَلَهُمْ كَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَوَاءً مَحْيَاهُمْ وَمَمَاتُهُمْ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ Surah Al-Jathiyah, the same surah, I-21. With the explanation, Do those who commit evil deeds think that we will treat them just the same as those who truly believe and work righteous deeds the same in their life and after their deaths what an evil judgment they make and then Sheikh Bazan quotes further evidence on the same point the last evidence he quotes on this point he said and he the most high said am naj'alu alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati kal mufsidina fil ard أَمْ نَجْعَلُ الْمُتَّقِينَ كَالْفُجَّارِ Surah Saad, the 38th Surah, Ayah 28, with the explanation, Or shall we make those who truly believe and work righteous deeds like those who cause corruption upon the earth? Or shall we treat those who are dutiful to Allah just like the wicked unbelievers? That's where Shaykh Al-Fawzan, or Shaykh Al-Fawzan then said, this is not possible, and this will never be the case. And those who behave in that way in this life, those are true believers and work righteous deeds in this life. And the opposite case, those who disbelieve in Allah and commit that evil which is forbidden, they will never be treated the same. Then the Imam, then comes the saying of the author Shaykh Al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahmahullah, he continued, so I just said, Al-Ula anna Allah khalaqana wa razaqana wa nam yatrukna hamalan, bal arsala ilayna rasoola. I just said that Allah, the first matter, is that, is that Allah created us and gave us provision and did not leave us without a purpose. Then he said, rather, he sent a messenger to us. Rather, he sent a messenger to us. Bal arsala ilayna rasoola. Shaykh Fawzan said in explanation, Since it is the case that we may not carry out a ibadah, worship, based upon what we think is good, nor upon taqlid, nor upon blindly following, so-and-so and so-and-so so -and -so from the people. And this is the case. This is the fact. That we are not allowed to perform worship of Allah based upon what we ourselves just think is good. Or that somebody so-and-so somebody, so -so said, or so-and-so said. So Shaykh said, since this, is, since, this is, since this is the case, that we may not carry out a bad worship based upon what we think is good, nor upon blindly following so-and-so -so from the people, then Therefore, Allah sent to us a message. Allah sent to us messengers, Rusulan, to make clear to us how we are to worship Him. Because acts of worship are tawqifiyya. Acts of worship are tawqifiyya, dependent upon text. It is not permissible that Allah be worshipped except with that which he has legislated. Obviously, contrary to the Christians and their light, those who worship Allah upon ignorance, just as they feel they want to worship Allah, they worship him as they wish. 
not as he wishes to be worshipped. The Shaykh made the point, acts of worship are tawqifiyya, are dependent upon text. It is not permissible that Allah be worshipped except with that which he has legislated. And he said, so acts of worship are tawqifiyya, they are restricted to text, to that which the messengers والسلام, came with. So the wisdom behind the sending of the messengers is that they should make clear to the people how they are to worship their Lord and for them to forbid them from shirk, from association of others along with Allah and from kufr, from disbelief in Allah the Mighty and Majestic. This is the duty of the messengers and therefore he alayhi salatu wasalam said and he quotes the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for this reason he said man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa rad whoever does an action which our affair is not in accordance with then it will be rejected in a footnote they mention it's checking as preceded and we had earlier in the book that this hadith is reported by Al is, uh, this hadith is mentioned by Al Bukhari in disconnected form without connected chain as hadith number 7350 in the book of Ibtisan clinging Ibtisan clinging to the book in the Sunnah chapter 20 and the hadith is reported by Muslim with a fully connected chain from hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha that's with this particular wording as we heard and there is a second wording for the hadith which both of them report with connected chain then Shaykh al-Fawzan said so ibadah, worship is tawqifiyya is dependent upon text and bid'ah, innovations are rejected and baseless superstitions and ideas are rejected and taqlid al-a'ma and blind following is rejected. Acts of worship are not taken except from the Sharia, from the revealed law, which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, he's saying, Qawruhu bal arsala ilayna rasula, he's saying, rather he sent to us a messenger. Shaykh Fawzan said, he is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the khatam, the seal, the last one of the prophets he sent him to make clear to us why we were created or rather he said, he sent, he sent him to make clear to us why we were created or why he created us, either of those and to make clear to us how we are to worship Allah the Mighty and Majestic and to forbid us from shirk and kufr, unbelief and from sins, ma'asi from shirk, associating others with Allah and from kufr, from unbelief and from al ma'asi and from sins this was the duty of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he clearly conveyed the message and he fulfilled the trust which was given to him and he gave sincere advice to the nation and he explained fully and made clear and he left us upon he left us upon a clear white ground its night is just the same as its day no one deviates away from it except one who is destroyed and this is just as is in is it just as in is in his saying, he the most high, Aliyama Akmautu Lakum Dinakum, Wa Atmamtu Alaikum Nikmati, Wa Raditu Lakum Islam Adina, Sutul Ma'ida, the fifth surah, ayah three. With the explanation This day have I completed your religion for you and perfected my favour upon you. 
and I'm pleased for you with Islam as your religion. Um, that's where we will end uh, today. And at this, this same point, this first point here, it just it carries on. فَمَنْ أَطَاعَهُ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ أَصَاهُ دَخَلَ النَّارِ and then, then the Shaykh, the Shaykh, Shaykh Islam gives the evidence. So whoever obeys him, this messenger, will enter paradise, and whoever disobeys him will enter the fire. And the evidence and the text carries on. But we'll leave it there until next time, inshaAllah. Any points of clarification? Encouragement. If, if there are any of those, any of those who have not memorized the book, who wish to memorize, or are hoping, hoping to memorize the book as we go along, let's get to the sort of get to the point now. If you've not started now, it's going to, it's going to get difficult. We've reached the point now. You could just about manage to make up now. If you leave it any longer, it will become difficult. Oh, well, I'll the length of the text. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاك الله خيرا